Hi guys, welcome back to Empower, and my name is Carolyn Puerto Thomas. I'm so excited to have you with me today. So thank you for watching this video and all of my videos. This video is going over a medication that you will see a absolute lot. It is a very powerful diuretic medication. As a nurse working in telemetry and step down units, I have seen this medication given when patients are in severe distress and it works extremely fast, especially when you give it intravenously. So the medication's name is Lasix. So I really hope that this video helps you understand the pharmacology of the video and also the nursing implications and the things that you as a nurse need to know. So stay tuned until the end because I am going to be having a giveaway of another diuretic. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna be giving away a gift card, <laughs> a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> as you know, coffee is a diuretic, um, but not quite as potent and you can't give it intravenously. That I know of anyways. <laughs> So anyway, stay tuned until the end and you will find out how you can win this gift card. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over Lasix. Furosemide, also known as Lasix, is a loop diuretic, commonly used to treat fluid retention and edema, which can be associated with congestive heart failure, cirrhosis of the liver, and many kidney disorders. It is also sometimes used to treat hypertension alone or in combination with other antihypertensive drugs. Diuretics are medications that increase the amount of water that passes through the kidneys as urine. Thus, it is often called a water pill. Lasix belongs to a group known as loop diuretics. There are a few types of diuretics and loop diuretics are just one type. It works by interfering with the sodium, potassium, and chloride symporter. A symporter is a protein membrane that manages the transport of molecules across the cell membrane. The symporter that Lasix interacts with is found in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. What it does is inhibits the reabsorption of salt and chloride. Since salt and chloride will be leaving the body system through the loop of Henle, this means that water will also follow, causing more water to pass through the kidney, which will ultimately mean less fluid remaining in the bloodstream. Once Lasix is received, the system will then compensate the loss by absorbing any fluids accumulated in the tissues, such as tissues in the lungs or extremities back into the bloodstream. This will cause more fluid to be in the bloodstream, which once again passes through the kidney, which will also be excreted in the urine. This mechanism is what makes loop diuretics a treatment for fluid retention, also known as edema. It can therefore ease the symptoms of edema, such as breathlessness caused by congestion of the fluid in the lungs. Patients diagnosed with CHF, cirrhosis of the liver, nephrotic syndrome, and other edematous states may encounter. Lasix is also available in forms that can be taken orally and intravenously. When taken intravenously, it is considered to be twice as strong. Parental or intravenous furosemide is indicated when fast-acting and intense diuresis is needed, such as in acute pulmonary edema and cerebral edema. It is also indicated when oral therapy is not possible because of the problem with absorption in the intestine or for other reasons. Parental administration should be observed only in the hospital or outpatient clinics because patients need to be closely monitored. Precautions and contraindications. Severe hypokalemia is a major contraindication. This means low potassium. This is a major side effect. Lasix can cause dramatic decrease in potassium levels, which could cause lethal cardiac arrhythmias. Other contraindications and cautions include hypotension, which is also known as low blood pressure. Also, Lasix should be used in extreme caution with patients who have a diagnosis of lupus because it may exacerbate lupus and cause a flare-up. It should also be used in caution in patients with diabetes mellitus, liver disease, and renal impairment. Other complications that can be caused by Lasix include hyponatremia, hyperglycemia, hyperuricemia, hypotension, metabolic alkalosis, hepatic coma, and hypovolemia with or without low blood pressure. Some things to be aware of include that it is important to not start therapy on patients who are in a hepatic coma or on patients who have electrolyte depletion until replacement therapy is given or improvement is noted. 
It is also important to know that there is a risk of ototoxicity, which can cause tinnitus, which means a constant noise in the ears, such as ringing. It can also cause reversible or irreversible hearing loss. Take note that food may delay the absorption of a medication, but not the diuretic response. It is also important to know that prolonged use in premature neonates may cause nephrocalcinosis. And for your female patients that are within childbearing age, you must know that this medication is in pregnancy category C and should only be taken if absolutely necessary because there is a risk of harming the fetus. Use caution if your patient has recently undergone an MRI or any test using radioactive dye injected into the veins. This dye can cause kidney damage, especially if your patient is dehydrated, which can be caused by Lasix. Overdose management. If your patient has a sign of dehydration, which could include increased B1 and creatinine levels, normal saline may be used for volume depletion. If your patient experiences low blood pressure, medications such as dopamine and norepinephrine may be necessary if the treatment of replacement fluids is not adequate. If your patient experiences a cardiac dysrhythmia due to decreased potassium or magnesium levels, levels should be checked and replacement electrolytes can be given if they are low so be sure to notify your physician. Drug interaction. Lasix has a potential hazardous interaction with the following drugs. There is increased risk of nephrotoxicity with NSAIDs, so extra precautions need to be noted when your patient needs this type of medication. Antibacterials can increase the risk of ototoxicity, especially with aminoglycosides, polymyxins, and vancomycin. Antihypertensives need to be used cautiously because it can enhance the hypotensive effects of the medication. Cyclosporin can increase the risk of nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity, and hepatotoxicity. It is also good to note that the use of lithium can increase the risk of toxicity levels. Patient education. Instruct your patient to follow a high potassium diet during long-term therapy of furosemide. Also for your patients who are on a low sodium diet, Strict sodium restriction is not advisable when under furosemide therapy. Instruct your patient to get up slowly from sitting or lying position to prevent fall due to dizziness. Advise your patient that the skin may be more sensitive to sunlight during therapy. Also advise your patient to be sure to drink plenty of adequate fluids and avoid being dehydrated when on furosemide. Instruct your patient to report any of the following signs and symptoms of a possible allergic reaction which can include difficulty breathing, hives, swelling of the face, lip, tongue, or throat. Also instruct your patient to stop taking furosemide and call their doctor right away if the following serious side effects occur, such as rapid weight gain or loss, ringing in the ears, hearing loss, itching, loss of appetite, dark stool, clay-colored stool, jaundice, severe pain in the upper stomach spreading to the back, nausea and vomiting, urinating less than usual or not at all. Also instruct your patient to watch out for the signs and symptoms of low potassium, which can include leg discomfort, muscle weakness, limp feeling, confusion, uneven heart rate. Also instruct your patient to watch out for the signs and symptoms of low calcium, which can include overactive reflexes, a tingling feeling around the mouth, muscle tightness, or contraction. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. After the video, be sure you look below in the description section because we have a lot more questions available for you to help you understand. Keep in mind that even if you understand all of the information in your lecture and all of the information in this video, the questions are still extremely difficult to answer. So you must review as many as possible. Question number one. The attending physician made the following orders for his pulmonary edema client, admitted to the medical floor. Which one should be questioned by the nurse? A. Start Carifate together with Lasix, 20 mg tab TID. B. Strict INO monitoring. C. Weigh client daily. D. Start one liter of normal saline to run for 24 hours. With NCLEX questions, you will be tested on all kinds of different issues related to different medications, which is what makes these types of questions so difficult. Remember, you could be tested on this question even if you do not know what carefate is. However, since you are here, 
I will tell you that Carafe is a medication given to patients with stomach ulcers. It creates sort of like a lining on the stomach and coats it. One nursing consideration is that it can prevent the absorption of other medications. So it is supposed to be given on an empty stomach and the medication times should be separated by at least two hours making A wrong and therefore the correct answer. All of the other answer options are correct when considering the medication Lasix. Question number two. The nurse caring for a client with heart failure has a potassium level of 3.2 milli equivalents. She anticipates the physician to make the following changes to the client's plan of care. A, refer the client to a neurologist. B, have the client's hemoglobin A1C checked. C, replace Lasix with aldactone, or D, all of the above. In clients with decreased potassium levels needing a diuretic, aldactone is a potassium sparing diuretic that can be used in place of Lasix. Making C, replace Lasix with aldactone the correct option. And finally, question number three. Failure reviews his discharge instructions with the nurse. Which of the following statements about weight indicates a good understanding by the client? A. I should report to the physician if I gain 2 to 3 pounds in a day. B. I should report to the physician if I lose 2 to 3 pounds in a day. C. Both A and B. Or D. Neither A nor B. When monitoring fluid loss with clients taking furosemide, they should inform their physician if they lose or gain 2 to 3 pounds in a day. This fluid loss may be desired, however, it is good for the physician to track to make sure the client does not become dehydrated. Making the correct answer option C. All right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a much better understanding of the medication and what you need to know as a nurse to properly care for your patient. So if this video did indeed help you, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up also give the video a thumbs up if you would like to see more pharmacology videos and we will do our best to make them for you. Also, to win the Starbucks gift card, all you have to do is post a positive comment. You can post your favorite quote, which I can use in my next motivational video. You can also post a video request. We always try to accommodate those. And you can also just say hi if you would like. I love hearing from you guys. See below in the description section to see how you find out if you won or not. So anyways, until next time guys, I can't wait to see you again soon. I love you so much. Bye.